I think I might have done it. Yes, <laughs> finally, we corrected. How's it going, James? Go. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. I'm good, thank you. I'm good. I uh, I was just totally, totally confused by the Twitter Spaces interface there, and I was oh, trying to connect on my desktop, and then I thought, no, I'll try it on my phone, and ah, I'm here. Sorry, thank you so much. Thank you it's for fine. Uh, it's fine. inviting Don't worry. me and your patience. <laughs> yeah, that's all fine. We always go for this because even if you would know the the Twitter Spaces app inside, not the app, the function inside out, it's still going to yeah. be buggy every now and then. So I, I've yeah. been through this before. Um, n- nothing new under the sun. So don't worry. <laughs> you, you've got that air cover too. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, we, we can blame Twitter on this on this occasion. Yeah. Anyway, how, uh, how, how are you? How is life for you? <laughs> I'm doing okay, thank you. I'm doing, I'm doing well. Um, yeah, I'm having a, a good day. The sun started shining in, in London, so that's always good. Uh, that's a rarity. And I'm, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, yeah, it's like my first time doing an AMA kind of thing. So I'm excited. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, what I plan to do is basically just have a chat with you for, I mean, the, the, this whole thing is going to be a conversation sort of thing back and forth. And then when people have a question, I mean, I, I'll start with a few questions just to get the ball rolling. But when people have a question, they can use the sure. button in the lower left, I'm telling now to the people. Uh, request the mic, who add you as a speaker. Sure. So um, what's, what's happening, what's happening yeah. in the world of James Gill and in the world of Go Square these days? <laughs> yeah, uh, the world of James Gill and Go Square, um, that's a great question. <laughs> I... The world of James Gill is trying to make sure he's as close to his internet router as possible <laughs> so that the Wi-Fi doesn't break. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, no, it's, uh, well, it's a pleasure to be chatting with you, Daniel. Um, I think, uh, yeah, in terms of what's going on for me uh, and the team at the moment, um, at Go Squared, we're working on a really exciting new uh feature release at the moment we're hoping to get to release it um in the next in the next week or so or at least uh, definitely this month um and uh and so that's always an exciting time because the team's been working really hard on 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 some on a new feature we're calling it forms it's all about helping our customers um capture leads on their website and it's been a hugely requested feature for a long time so um that's always exciting because it brings the whole team together uh from like engineering the product side and the growth side to get something out the door and that's always exciting mm-hmm. um so quite focused on that at the moment uh at, at, at go squared um for me personally uh what's going on for me <laughs> i'm trying to make sure i focus on helping the team do that i'm also uh uh i guess there's quite a few things going on at the moment quite a few habits i've been trying to adopt um been uh, reading a great book called Atomic Habits, mm-hmm. which is really helping me uh, develop some healthy habits and try to <laughs> live live a healthier life. Um, and so I've been trying to increase my fitness, work on my schedule. I've been trying to write more. So I've been writing on my personal blog a little bit, uh, which has been very helpful. Happy to talk about that some more. And I've also um, also recently started a, a podcast called Lost and Founder, mm-hmm. which is sort of trying to share some of my, um, my uh, I don't know, my pain points, lessons, <laughs> struggles along the way, which has been quite uh, therapeutic for myself, at least. <laughs> right. Yeah. That makes sense. I've seen, I've seen the podcast released. I haven't seen uh, the forms and the features you've mentioned, but that's because they aren't released. Quick question. Did you yeah. guys preview them in any place or am I getting the exclusive uh, flashy tabloid sort of uh, set of news from you <laughs> right now? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a little bit of a sneak preview, nice. uh, Daniel. Yeah, um, so we're, we're uh, working on that right now. And for some of our existing customers, we've just been... We've actually just this afternoon been shipping um, a version to to some of our some of our customers, so that's really exciting. And then um, teeing up to 
release something a bit more um, publicly uh, in in the coming uh, week or so. Well, that's yeah. good. I'm glad. I'm glad I got <laughs> the exclusive uh, sneak peek right here. You've heard it here. Well, first. Uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> of course, anything for you. Danny. Anything <laughs> I for appreciate. You. That. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, um, so many things you, you've mentioned that I want to touch upon, but I'll get back to them later because. I, I feel like yeah. the best thing to the best sort of question to start with is, I mean, just like the title of the AMA, I spent half my life, 15 years, I'm quoting you here, <laughs> half my life, 15 years building yeah. Ghost Squad. Um, wh- yeah. What I appreciate the most about that is the fact that one sort of like I saw you, you were chatting with Jason Fried in his AMA and then you made that video as well, uh, which yeah. was lovely. I really love seeing that. So <laughs> Uh, oh, cool. I can see you like, or at least, if, if, you know, in some aspects, you like the base camp philosophy, uh, staying small, not sure. going at all costs and that sort of thing. I've also yeah. chatted to uh, Beth and Russell, who are in this Twitter space yeah, room as well. Yeah. Great people. <laughs> I saw them. Yeah. Ru- Russell's meant to be on holiday, by the way. I, I... Oh, okay. I hope, you, I hope you didn't force him to listen to this. Russell, give, I... give us a double tap if you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fingers crossed. Joke aside, joke aside. What I'm trying to say yeah. is, uh, I've seen part of your team, and so a, yeah. a, a long, long tenure, uh, short, a small team, but very, very mm. focused. So both Beth and Russell okay. are smart. I, I see that they know what they're doing. They <laughs> love what they're doing. How does that feel? Because yeah. I'm trying to read between the lines and I can see there's a lot of work in building a team with people like Russell and Beth and I'm sure the rest of the team yeah. is, should be in in the same amongst the same lines. Yeah, I I mean honestly yeah, I, I, well uh, where do I start? Um yeah, it, it it has been so a couple of things you you mentioned uh the base camp folks and Jason Freed, I think they've been a huge inspiration from the early days for us. Um I think we've always tried to build a company that um, maybe doesn't uh, doesn't do this, the status quo or the normal route. Um, and we've certainly shone away from a lot of the hyped uh, advice for, for startups, especially around raising huge amounts of capital or seeking the, the tech crunch fame. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and have always tried to focus on building a company that we that we enjoy working at, that hopefully the team enjoy working at, even though we force them onto Twitter spaces <laughs> calls on their holidays. Um, and, uh, and and we've always tried to, you know, just at a core level, like build <laughs> build a company and a product that we're, we're proud to put our, our names to. And, um, and, uh, and yeah, and I, I think the team... I mean, the team give everything to it. Um, you know, I, yeah, you mentioned uh, Beth and, and Russell there, and uh, they've both been incredible for a long, long period of time with the company. And, um, you know, I, I often feel quite guilty when, uh, you know, when people sort of talk about uh, a founder and, uh, you know, how much, often a lot of um, glory goes to a founder or a CEO in a, in a team. And, and uh, I'd like to think I try to deflect as much of that glory to the rest of the, the team because, you know, everyone plays a critical role and, um, and, and everyone is, is, works so hard to make things happen. And I, I kind of view a lot of my job, especially as we've gotten to be, a, you know, a bigger, a, not a huge team, but a bigger team, a lot of my job to just be trying to make sure that I'm giving them what they need and getting out of their way when they don't need me. And um and so, uh, yeah, and I, I think it's just continued to amaze me what, what people can do as they, um, as, as when you give them the, the space and the right guidance and the right, the right, um, the right guardrails. And uh, I think I'm always trying to find my feet on that as a founder. Um, you know, there's plenty more I could talk to there. A lot of that is kind of partly why I've done the podcast thing to t- sort of share some of that. But, you know, I think, I think people like uh, Russell have, you know, Russ has been with us for so many years now um, and and worked his socks off day in, day out. And uh, I couldn't ask for more from him. And uh, and Beth has, has just grown so much since, you know, Beth joined us as a, a freelance sort of content writer um, many years ago and on a part-time basis and has grown into this amazing 
head of growth for us. Um, and, and, and it's just amazing when people, you know, when, when the going gets tough and, um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, things, um, people have a, when, when things get tough and when, when there's challenges, people can either shy away from them and, uh, think, well, that's not my job. And, you know, that's not for me. I'm, I'm not here to do that. Or, or they can step up and, and take that on and treat it as a, an opportunity to grow. And I think that's, that's certainly what we try and look for with, with anyone on the team. But, you know, um, <laughs> Beth and Russell, obviously, I, I, I would have to say that as they, they've chosen to spend their afternoon on this call. Like, they, they do that in <laughs> Spain. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, happy to talk more on team stuff. But, yeah, I, 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 I'm forever amazed at how and, and humbled, really, uh, that I get to work with, with great people. And that's a big reason why I love running a company you know you get to choose who you work with and um you get to work with great people if uh if if you if you don't piss them off <laughs> that's lovely that's lovely yeah. and i'm i i resonate with what you say to, to the degree in which i think you know you have all these waves that might come and go might come and stay who knows like creator economy uh you know building a public whatever i Part of me would like to believe that we're going, this, this is just my opinion, and I'm going to be sh- sure about it because this is not my AMA, but uh, part of me likes mm-hmm. to believe that we're going this direction where a company will be more of a, a set of people who are quite autonomous up to a degree and have space to, and the reason why I'm saying this is space to grow. The reason why I'm saying this is because I see you guys in Go Squared have this dynamic, and I, I think that's uh, mm. that's lovely. But talk about, I want to pick something else yeah. that you said. You said we're not uh, looking for the TechCrunch uh, mention mm. or the TechCrunch fame. However, across these years, some stuff happened to you mm. in terms of PR, in terms of attention. Like you've been on Bloomberg, <laughs> you've been yeah. on the cover of Square Mile, <laughs> which if people don't know, it, it, it's a... It's a magazine for men's luxury lifestyle sort of thing. So that was the film nice <laughs> as a side effect that just came uh, without you looking for it. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I mean, uh, just uh, sorry, I know I might be darting around a little bit. I mean, just back onto your point on the team, just just for one second, Daniel. I, I would just say that it's been incredible since, um, you know, in the last year that everyone's been through with the, with going remote and everything that um, I actually think uh, as a team and as a company, we've evolved quite a bit thank, thanks to it. And uh, I think beforehand, if you look, um, you know, if you rewind sort of two years, I think we were a much more rigid, formalized structure of a company. And I, I think over the last year, year and a half, we've really um, learned to embrace some of the freedom that the remote remote working gives us and um i mean as an example like russell's based up in scotland um although he's currently in canada which confuses things even more (laughs) Uh, but um and 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 you know uh team members sort of the 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 strictness on when people work and where people work just it isn't there anywhere near like it 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 used to be and I, i think that's been overwhelmingly for the for the better of of each individual and working to their own areas that they feel they work best and and collectively as a team and um and i i think it's i think you can only do that when you have real trust in the people that you work with and and have great people that you work with and so yeah i just wanted to touch on that because i think it's been a a bit of a shift for us we were previously all in one office Mm -hmm. all um around one set of desks and i think there was a lot of concern from from myself and uh and others that like you know that these changes would be would be really destructive to our culture but i think if anything we've learned to grow and develop and um not that we haven't got stuff to work on but uh but yeah i think i think we've chosen to embrace the changes over the last year year and a half uh and then yeah so um i just wanted to touch no on worries. that but, but then yeah on the on the publicity side uh and attention side you know it's not that we actively seek to avoid <laughs> attention in the media. Um, but I think there's been some things where we've gotten lucky and we've been very fortunate. 
um to to get some attention and you know part and parcel of being around for a long time you by default you probably end up bumping into a, a journalist or a, a bit of a, a a blog post here and there um without without even necessarily trying to but um but yeah i don't know over time like um i yeah probably the most flattering thing that's personally happened to me was getting put on the front of a magazine <laughs> in london which um which was nice. I got to wear a Paul Smith suit and do a photo shoot. I had to give the suit back. But, um, <laughs> but that was that was an honor. Um, but but you know, like that, things like that, they make they make you feel good. But All right, hold it's on. always hard hold to. On. I need to compliment because yeah. I know you you're, you're humble enough not to bring it up. But for the people listening, Square Mile is a is a magazine that had on their covers people like. Uh, Daniel Ricciardo, Formula One driver, <laughs> Leo DiCaprio, <laughs> uh, Henry Cavill, Idris Elba, all sorts of people. Yeah. So that was the, yeah. and the reason why, why I'm saying this because and the reason why I brought it up was because that's why I think is interesting. You guys are not actively looking to get the next headline or to mm. to become viral or something. So okay, I, I I understand you're saying this this is a bit of luck, but it's also the fact that you know when you're lucky, you also need to be ready to pick it up. So that's nice that it happened without even putting the effort yeah. to actively look for it. And of course, it's a vanity thing. Like, uh, I, I, I'm pretty yeah. sure that you didn't get too many more customers after you were on the cover. But I, I like yeah. the, the calm mindset. And uh, hey, look, it, it could happen this way as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio is not too much of a tough act to follow. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, I, I, I mean... Uh, I, yeah, the, the um, go, getting on the uh, into a magazine is, is is always nice. It's always nice to tell your friends and family about it or whatever. But um, but yeah, I I, I think um, I think there's I think there's opportunity out there for for a lot of people in terms of getting more exposure and awareness. That um, you know, at times I think I think we've been very fortunate, but I think also I'd look at it and think that there's often opportunities outside of the the normal expectations of what you can you can do and um i think i think a big part of you know being a smaller team and an upstart and uh, a hungry small young team that that's like that hungry to take on opportunities is looking at um things from different angles and different perspectives and you know when you when you think about trying to get awareness and exposure it can sometimes be um tempting I, I think on the marketing side we often have this debate of like there's a lot a hell of a lot of marketing that um is just impossible to truly um attribute or measure and and i think um i i, I think sometimes there's this real desire especially in the tech world to to do stuff that to, to sort of overvalue the work that can be measured and undervalue that 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 can't be measured mm -hmm. and um I, I think, you know, when you look at growth and you look at opportunities, you can sort of look at things like Google ads and, yeah. and um, display ads and, and these paid channels as, um, uh, you know, often it can feel, especially when you're sitting at your computer, like, well, you don't have much choice but to write a check to Google <laughs> to grow your business. But um, I think especially for us in the early days and building awareness, like, there was a lot of opportunity out there to um, to do things that would spark some attention and, and be resourceful. And I think that's also comes from um, when you don't have a ton of money in the bank, you, you sort of look at, you know, if, if you've just raised $10 million, then, then you have a lot of money to throw behind ads. If you've spent a lot of time trying to build up revenue from customers mm -hmm. and, um, and haven't raised so much money, then you, you don't have so many options on, on how to grow. So, you try and work with what you've got and what we have got and what we've had has been well enough like i would say like being in london is an opportunity like it's obviously it's not san francisco but it has different opportunities mm -hmm. uh and at the time we were a a, a a tech business run by a young team and uh the startup scene in london was much more um in its infancy and so we sort of jumped on those opportunities to kind of talk about that and and hopefully inspire other people and and that that was quite a quite a cool opportunity to jump on uh and then there's there's also um you know i think there's also lots of opportunities if you're if you're just quick and reactive um so you know often uh there's opportunities with 
news cycles and uh you know on social media for instance like you can if you're quick to respond and be the first to give out to, to come up with a, a meme response to something or a, a funny reply to something um uh, you know I, I got a book ages ago called newsjacking which i quite liked and it sort of uses um you know talks about how you can use the news cycle as a an opportunity to to jump on whatever's hot and and find a way to fit your brand into it and obviously some brands get that right and <laughs> sometimes they don't but but we've we've done some very successful things by jumping on opportunities quickly and you can't plan for those things you can't plan like oh in two weeks time we're gonna jump on whatever the hottest story of the day is um because you don't know what it will be and you don't know what you're gonna do but i think that's part of like giving yourself a little bit of room in your schedule and um understanding that there's opportunities if you respond quickly and uh, and i think that's been pretty pretty fun to see over, over time um you know things like we uh I, I remember one of the most successful in terms of traffic generation things we ever did was um one of the team was staying late in the office and was just uh looking at our um, uptime graphs and our, our lots of our internal data and saw a massive drop in all of the traffic uh, to our systems and uh, across all of our customers and all of their websites. And he thought like, oh God, like something's gone wrong. Like, oh my God, like what, what's happening? Like we must be having issues. Wow. And then realized, um, re- he realized that actually uh, Google had gone down oh. for about five minutes. And uh, and he just shared this graph really quickly, like an internal graph on our engineering blog of all places, showing like how we dropped, I think, about 40 percent in traffic across our entire network of all of our customers. Yeah. And um, whatever happened, like that graph got picked up by like someone on Twitter and then it got picked up by another person on Twitter. And when we woke up the next morning, th- this single graph had been shared by almost every major news outlet around the world as one of the <laughs> authoritative sources of um, information about the impact Google can have on internet traffic. Yeah. And it, it literally got featured in like, I think the Washington Post, it got featured in like the Times in the UK, it got featured by uh, newspapers in Germany and Australia. Um, it got, I think it got featured on the BBC, uh, all sorts of places. And um all from just being kind of quick to respond and quick to service something. And, you know, I think there's always a danger in companies as they scale and grow. If, if you, you often want to put more process in place to be more predictable with how you do things. Um, but sometimes, you know, you've got to figure out when you let that process <laughs> ease a bit to, to jump on opportunities and just be quick to react and change the things. So, um, yeah, that's a big rambling response to whatever you asked me. The first day. <laughs> no, no, don't worry, don't worry. It's fine. I love the story about the, yeah. about the engineering <laughs> pickup. Yeah. So what that's I hear fun. from you is you can't really plan to get lucky, but in a sense, you could get, you could be ready to get lucky, or when luck gets you, <laughs> you could be ready. That's probably a good way to put, put yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> I want to tell people now. So I'm gonna go with my next question, but I want to tell people like if they have a question. Uh, two ways to go at it either click the button in the lower left corner request the mic we'll add you as a speaker or if you can't talk for whatever reason you can dm me and i can be the voice for your question but uh, james until we get uh, somebody coming in another angle i want to pick up on it uh, the thing is yeah. many things i can pick on from what you said but uh, then we'll, we'll speak for longer than one i think we can speak for hours uh, another <laughs> thing i would really uh, hate to miss out on asking you is so you started yeah. this when you were 15 and that, that's <laughs> half your life. So I'm my math. If my math is holding up, you're 30 years old now. Um, <laughs> that is correct. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of as a young person myself and for anybody who's uh, listening to this, because this is getting recorded. So it's not just the people in the room now, maybe even in the future cool. for young people listening to yeah. this. Um, I feel like advice is pretty much a time shortcut if the advice you're listening is right and you're understanding it and everything. But what sort of time yeah. shortcuts or advice would you give to maybe younger self, maybe young people generally? Uh, I just feel like you've got, uh, as you said, you've got worse stories and worse cars. So uh, sometimes <laughs> the scars help you make a better decision. But talk to us yeah. if you will about what you would tell younger people given the experience. 
Yeah, it feels it feels weird because uh, I still feel, for the most part, young. But uh, <laughs> younger, I have to say. But uh, something about turning turning thirty feels very daunting. <laughs> um, but but uh, but yeah, I, I I don't know. I think that's um. Well, it's an incredible uh, privilege to feel like I should be in any position to offer anyone. Advice. I mean, look, but, it um, could be somebody who's guess... twenty nine, or it could be somebody who's fifty. Let's call it that. Just yeah, younger. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I don't know. I I think um obviously everyone's everyone's on their own journey. Everyone's you know got their own things to figure out. Um, I think for for me, I, turning thirty has actually been an opportunity to reflect on various things and uh, look at what maybe I wish I'd known earlier or sooner. Um, so I, I yeah, just trying to think about that a little bit. I I think um I I think I would say um. Let's see where to start. If you would be, I, if you would be I, sitting, uh, sitting, sitting at the table, and across the view is James at twenty or twenty-two. Yeah. So yeah. a few years of experience, but also still, and I, I mean, I, I suppose you won't be closing Go Square tomorrow. I, I still feel like you, you keep going with the company for as long as you could. This is the vibe I'm getting. I might be wrong, but yeah, this is really yeah. much the, yeah. the the vibe I'm getting from your uh, communication and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah, certainly not. No intention to close Go Square tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we've got, a, I think, a very exciting, um, exciting future ahead. Uh, and, you know, uh, part of why I love doing this is I feel there's so much opportunity always ahead and so much opportunity to grow, to develop, to learn, um, to put great things out into the world and, uh, and to continue working with amazing people. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 think, I think looking back... Um, I, I would say, I would say it's very, I mean, let, let's try to preface this maybe with people that are looking to, I mean, got, we're talking about SaaS predominantly, I guess. So, yeah. um, you know, I'm assuming that these, you know, people listening, tuning in are vaguely interested in being entrepreneurial in some way um, and starting a business or at least being core to a, a smaller business or, or a smaller team. I, I think it's so important to, um, to make time for yourself <laughs> and, and to make sure you look after yourself. Um, I, I think uh, I've found a lot of conflicts over the years of how, how to think about my own personal life versus the company and and the the business, and I, I've often struggled to separate the two, and I, I think that has led to to challenges for me around um, being as objective as I should be about the business, and it's led me to make I think at times poor decisions in my personal life. Mm -hmm. Um, driving people up the wall that I <laughs> either live with or um, <laughs> have relationships with or whatever. Um, and I, I, think, I think that's just something to bear in mind that, um, you know, it's, it's really important to watch out for. I think, you know, um, you, don't, you don't get infinite time on this, on this planet. And, um, and, and I think you have to be very conscious with the trade-offs you're making. And, and I think, again, sort of coming back to a lot of the narrative around company building, this desire to, you know, it's incredibly glorified to build a unicorn or a billion-dollar company. And I don't think people spend enough time really understanding uh, the implications of that for, for people as individuals and and, uh, and, and the trade-offs that might need to be made. And, um, I think I think one of the reasons why there's so much so much exciting stuff happening with the creator economy and um, with with a lot of the sort of independent businesses and um, you know the likes of the base camps of the world, but also there's a, a huge number of bootstrapped independent uh, businesses out there. Um, I I think there's it's this reminder that it's perfectly acceptable. <laughs> if not preferable in my eyes to build a a business you enjoy working at and you enjoy doing and you enjoy um running and and that you find for yourself the right level of balance between what you do for your business and what you do for yourself and 
find find ways to make them work together and um i think the the mindset of uh giving everything to your business giving every waking minute to your business and if you don't do that then you're uh, you're not trying hard enough is um is very dangerous uh to be the predominant theme of, of entrepreneurial advice i think especially the the silicon valley mindset um uh, but that's not to say that I, I I think anyone should should sort of feel shame in that that approach. I just think um, it's just important that people realize like there's no single way to build a business. There's no single way to live your life. Mm-hmm. There's no um, right way or wrong way necessarily. Um, and and that you spending time figuring that out for yourself is it often feels. Uh, you know, I think when I've tried to do that in the past, I've felt that it's it's almost selfish, <laughs> um, and I I felt uneasy spending time thinking about that for myself. And I, I, only in the last sort of year or so, I started working with a coach um, who really encouraged me to try and think about that stuff a bit more for myself, mm-hmm. and and that's been incredibly valuable. So I, I think that's probably one thing I would say. I think I probably got told this as well when I was younger to try to work with some sort of coach or mentor um, as early as possible, because it's not so much that that person's going to tell you, tell you the right things to do or the wrong things to do and stop you doing certain things. But that person is going to give you, force you to think about this stuff more for yourself and, and give you that time. And uh, I, I think that's something I just, I, I would have, I would have loved to have done earlier. And if I was starting off in my twenty, the start of my twenties again, I think I would, I would immediately go and try and find someone to be my, my mentor, my coach. Um, and I, I would say that's an incredibly valuable thing because you'll, you'll learn so much about yourself uh, by doing that and, and learn so much about what you want to do and, and what makes you tick. And that can only help you in the, business you run or the team you choose to be part of um and and i i think that's probably would be my my probably my biggest takeaway but if you ask me in an hour's time i'll probably say something totally different <laughs> don't worry we exist in space time so uh, uh, that, that's a dimension as well i get that both answers are very interesting especially since on number two uh, i'll briefly mention that uh time and time again not from every founder but from more than I expected, I've heard this piece of advice of getting a coach or a, a mentor. I was speaking to Vlad, the founder of Webflow, and somebody else, I mm. think Jason Cohn from WP Engine, I might be, might be mixing up, but mm. multiple, not just them two, just them two on a, on a recording, they've mentioned this this coach bit. And when you say that, do you mean uh, somebody who you pay the same way you would pay a therapist, or is it a mentor in the sense of a friend maybe more experienced person that sort of i mean mentor that's what yeah. i say mentor. <clears throat> yeah i i think maybe i was a little bit hazy with what i was saying there because i think both can be can be very valuable i um so one of the benefits i think that we've had or certainly that i've had from from being running go squared in the london tech scene has been um has been having a good network of of other founders and like-minded people um to talk to and i i would view them those people maybe slightly more like like mentors or people to go to with questions or share a tough problem with and and also to be a sounding board for them too and i I think that's been very valuable for me over many years like you know, realizing that (laughs) the problems you're going through, whether it's, I don't know, a big customer leaving or, uh, you know, a hire that you couldn't make or uh, challenges like that. um, Realizing that you are not alone in those those challenges has been incredibly valuable. But I, I think the bigger change, the bigger, like, shift for me has been working with a, a coach for, over a, a year now, about a year, um, and the and the coach I think is a different proposition. That is someone that um, that we pay, and and essentially it's I, I have a sort of a, an hour and a half session every every two weeks, um, two three weeks, and you know that that 
those sessions they don't I don't get on the call and listen <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen and and wait for like all the answers to be given to me that the session is almost entirely me talking <laughs> and um and I I the first few times I did it I was like oh god I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm rambling I'm sorry I'm talking to you and I'm talking to you I'm not letting you speak mm. and she, every time she was like no 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 <laughs> this is why you that's the me. point yeah. <laughs> I'm here to listen yeah. and and I think over time I've gotten much more used to it and uh, um the and I it's been amazing because all the you know <laughs> not to diminish what a good coach can do because I, I do believe I have a fantastic coach. Um, but, but, you know, she doesn't say too much, but she says things like, well, what do you think about that? And what would you do if, uh, if you weren't worried about other people's feelings or what would you do as a, if you were the CEO, what would the CEO do? What would James, the CEO do in that scenario? And, and she asks the right questions that bring out, a lot of stuff that I, I didn't know I already had figured out. And, and I, I think that's really truly helped me um, understand, just realize there's so much more inside you that if you have, have a good coach or you find the right techniques, you can find a lot of those answers from within it. And I, I think that there's probably a bigger point there of like, I think for so many people, um, in, in the tech world, like there's always, there's always another blog post to read, or there's always <laughs> another podcast episode to listen to. There's always another Twitter spaces session to <laughs> listen to. Um, there's always another Twitter thread to read. Um, but, you know, like there's always more information to glean, but um, often I think people overlook the, the answers they already have or the thoughts they already have inside, the experience they already have inside, the gut feels they already have inside to to move forward with, with things and um i think if you can find ways of of unlocking that and and getting that out of what's already in your own head then then that's an incredibly powerful thing to to do and um i think a, a coach can really help instill the right mindset and and the right habits the right techniques to to give you that that resilience that inner ability to 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 make make tough calls and, and move forward with things um in tough situations um so so yeah i think it's been incredibly incredibly valuable and yeah i would say having a coach i would say very very it's definitely something different there to sort of ha that i have lots of like industry peers other founders that i talk to um and it's important to have those too that network of people that you can you know you can grab a drink with <laughs> and share a a shitty day with um or or just um pick each other up or or hold each other accountable even um but that's that's very valuable in its own right but that's a sort of separate in my head at least a separate set of value that i get versus a coach where i feel that's more about unlocking what you have within yourself and um and giving you some space to to get that that nailed and i, I think that's that's for me being incredible even more valuable that, that's valuable as a as a conclusion from you what you were saying about i have this course but it's mainly me talking because n now that i think about it i when i imagine a mentor and i mean a proper mentor not somebody who tells you what to do because they claim they have mm. the answer a proper mentor is more asking you the questions and letting you figure it out mm. and uh, there i even say a proper mentor might seem boring at the surface level because i mean we all we all want <laughs> somebody to tell us i have the exact answer and this is it but at the end of the day we're all humans we're <laughs> limited so we can't know that so maybe that's why the the buddhist zen masters were quite boring on the surface <laughs> level because they just ask questions and they never gave you the, the proper <laughs> answer so um uh, yeah I, I i understand this as a conclusion from from what you were saying about the coach which i think is really really valuable but um mm. yeah so w would you have gotten a coach even in your 20s like as soon as possible i i think i think so i i really think so because you know i think uh, i i forget where i read or what i've i've seen before but you know when you think about um <laughs> when you think about a lot of other professions um 
you know you you have you have a coach like it, it no one thinks about being a professional athlete without having a coach yeah. to to continuously help them grow and be better yeah. um and uh and i i think you know not that i <laughs> not that i am uh an Olympic athlete or anything like that um, of the CEO world, but uh, but I think it, it's it's not a terrible comparison to think that like you know you you I think it does help you grow and develop and and uh, I think um, it it really helps you build build more clarity for yourself and uh, yeah I, I I think that's that that's certainly something I I would have. I really would have loved to have done sooner. And I, I, I think um, it's a tremendous, it, it, it is an investment that it, it feels weird sort of saying, well, you need, you should pay someone to, to talk to for an hour every few weeks. It feels very indulgent in a way. Um, but I, I, I think, honestly, if you can get clearer about what you want in life and what makes you tick and, um, and, and what you what you would rather not be doing, I, I think that can help you transform genuinely transform your life. And um, and I think if that's not worth investing in, then I'm not sure what is. Um, and I, I think uh, yeah, people are often um, it's it's an odd one because I think people are often very irrational with their with their decisions of where to spend money <laughs> and uh and and when when it comes to spending i think people are often a lot more fearful of spending money than they are of spending time mm. um i i think uh you know when you get an invoice for something you uh you go oh crikey that's expensive <laughs> but you don't get an invoice for like how much time you spend uh, on things and i i think um you know if working with a coach can you know, in your early 20s, if, if working with a coach can help you choose uh, the right path for, for what you want to do in your 20s, in your life, then um, I'll get clear about that <laughs> and get clear about what you shouldn't do. Then I, um, then I think it would be hard to put any price tag on that, to be honest. Like, uh, how would you even quantify that? Um, well, so I, I think, yeah, it could be incredibly valuable. And I, I would also say that, like... Um, I don't know how, uh, God, I don't know how ironic or uh, weird this is coming from me sort of suggesting some advice, but I'd be very hesitant to anyone sort of who goes to someone and, and, and anyone who starts giving you advice saying, this is the way you should do something. And this is the way, <laughs> this is the way you do it. This is the way you build your company. This is the way you build your life. This is the way you should be. Like, I think everyone I, everyone I respect, everyone I know, like, They've they've done things that their own ways and and anyone giving you you can only really share what's worked for you. Everyone's different. Everyone's got their own weird quirks and their own desires and goals. And you know, there's no one right or wrong way. You have to find what works for you. And so, seeking people that will help unlock that in yourself, and seeking people that ask you the right questions, and don't try to find people that will give you the answers because no one's got the answers. They've got their own opinions, their own experiences, their own data. Um, well, and you have to figure out what you want to do well, and what's going to make you work. Yeah, I think everybody sooner or later in life, uh, uh, everybody has to learn that, hey, you know, every piece of advice you listen to, you hear, it comes with a comma, this is what worked for me, with a disclaimer. I can guarantee yeah. it yeah. for you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, but, you know, talk, talking about worst cars, uh, referencing your, your AMA bio, which I really liked, uh, and I mentioned this to you before, uh, it, it's those worst cars of listening to somebody thinking somebody has an answer that makes you understand that, I guess, or at least <laughs> to, to quote myself, to be a bit meta, at least this has been mm. my experience so far. So, uh, mm. uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, and I, I think as I've, I've gone on, like I used when I was younger, people would ask me questions, and I think my naivety or my lack of experience, I would, I would often answer people quite directly, um, and sort of give them a straight answer to, to things that maybe I shouldn't have been so 
<laughs> clear on like you know if you if you ask me like how what's the best way to grow your audience for a SaaS business I could tell you what has worked for us and what hasn't but I can't give you an objective answer yeah. and I, I think at some level like you get to this frustrating point where the answer to every single question is it depends right <laughs> and it depends on so many factors and that's a bit dull and a bit unex a bit like not exciting but um you know I I, I think yeah it's just you know everyone wants the answers or shortcuts or or, or um quick wins and um sure there are some ways of speeding things up and getting to answers quicker but I think a lot of the best things are to find good frameworks, find good ways of thinking about things yourself, find good underlying principles um, and to get clear on what you yourself want want to do and achieve um, and uh, and to not to not wait for someone else to give you an answer. <laughs> no, this, this all makes sense. And to, to yeah. anybody listening to this, to for which this might not make sense, at least up to a degree, uh, I guess sooner or later it will because... Uh, yeah, well, life teaches us all sooner or later. So we're, we're, we're taking it to the grave. <laughs> this, yeah, this has gone so deep, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, I love it. I love it. But uh, let's let's switch gears as well. So at, at least in the recording, yeah, you yeah. can have some SaaS or some uh, so, some yeah, some insights course, yeah. on a, <laughs> on a business level. Which, by the way, yeah. I really enjoyed the, the depth of it. But just to cover a, a wider variety of topics. Uh, sure. In hindsight, after fifteen years. Walk us through what was your uh, 80-20 in terms of uh, maybe growth, maybe whatever kind of metric. I mean, growth is usually the one we're talking about, but if you want to pick another metric, that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, as in, like, what's the 20% thing that, that has yielded 80% results? Like, Yeah. Of, is, is that what you, you yeah, mean? Because yeah, because I, I guess after talking to founders and whether people realize it or not, I seen the other people do this as well. Uh, as you said, everybody has their own way of getting there, but um, everybody, every mm. company has to try 10, 20, 30 things, and then two of them are going to be, or one of them, or three of them, are going to be the most fruitful. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, let me know if that's not the case. I'd, I'd be curious. Yeah. To... Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. It, yeah. Absolutely. I. I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've I've never sort of done the work to figure out if it's truly twenty percent oh. of the the stuff and the eighty percent, but I, I think some of the things that have certainly over time proven and proven out to to yield very good results for for a, a fraction of the effort we put into other things has been um, has been writing writing very good content <laughs> um and that has for us um you know the work going into a a single um a single very good blog post can yield results for for years to come um and and that's that's been incredibly valuable and and uh, you know over time we've we've spent so much time and energy in all sorts of other growth methods of, of getting people to us things we spent countless thousands of pounds on on ads on on pay-per-click on display ads on all sorts and i think over time we've realized that you know perhaps channeling that energy into into really good content is a is a better use of our our limited resources mm -hmm. um i i think i think also maybe a slightly more producty related one is that um i think sometimes and and this is something i think we've slipped a bit on and we're trying to bring back but i think on product work um there's often this real desire to do product work that like delivers on what a customer is asking for and um uh, and no more and and you know do the this term minimum viable product is obviously very common and um banded around a lot and and i i think what we have found previously is when you go to <laughs> an unreasonable degree of attention to detail or adding a level of whimsical delight into a product um, in only in only a few small places, um, but doing a few things that 
people don't ask for and a lot of people won't even necessarily notice. Um, I think that can sometimes yield immeasurably strong uh, results as well. And, and I think, you know, where we've done that in the past, at critical points in the customer journey, it instills this, again, this is sometimes quite hard to measure, but I, I truly believe that if you, if you can get some of the underlying stuff right and apply that, that, that delight and that real attention to detail and in, in certain places in the product, then it can instill this level of confidence in your users and customers. And it can be the difference between someone being satisfied with, with a product and being overjoyed to use your product to the point where they will tell other people about it. And, and I think we've found that in, in the past. And, and I, I think it's always difficult to justify that work. Um, and, and it's sometimes hard to prove. It's incredibly hard to prove. But I think for us, that's been some areas where we've really found that that like, <laughs> perhaps it's that extra 20% of work, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it's been it yielded many more results than, than, than if we hadn't, hadn't done it before. So yeah, I think for us, um, yeah, yeah. Some, some really on the growth side, especially it's been putting the, putting the time and energy into some great content. And, um, and, and, and I, I think sometimes with that, it's about on the content side, I think also it's not just been about writing a good post, but it's the, the 20% effort of like, getting the headline just right and getting that image that like people see just right. And um, I, I think, I think that's sometimes the difference between a, a post getting seen and, and loved versus glossed over in a, in a sea of other content. And um, yeah, I, I, I think those are a few things. I mean, yeah, God, I, I feel like I should have more. Um, I, I mean, maybe one more, one more. <laughs> <laughs> no worries would be just if you can try to make time to get on calls with customers. Uh, and and I, I think I've struggled with this at times, but, I, you know, I got on a call with a potential customer yesterday and I would say that was about 20% of my day, but it, 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 um, it, it really, I, I think if you can take the time to get on calls with, with customers and, and listen, that that can have a huge, huge impact on the rest of of your business, of your of your funnel. Um, uh, and I I think that that uh, is is arguably something you should never grow out of as a founder or as a a team member on a on a on a small team. Like I I think it's always dangerous if you step too far away from not just what customers are saying, but how they're saying it. The level, the intricate words that they say and the tone of voice they have when they say it mm-hmm. there's so much like valuable wisdom in in every minute of those calls and and i think if you do that then it can that 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 20 minutes that 30 minutes on a call with a customer can yield so much valuable insight for what you do product wise what you do um pricing wise what you do growth wise content wise education wise uh, positioning wise um and so i i think certainly like the earlier you are as a business as well like the the more the more critical that is the less the less that's something that can be avoided um the less optional that becomes <laughs> that makes sense that's super strong and a, a bit of a piggyback on on the last bit about talking to customers do you ever talk to customers to validate quote unquote validate as much as you can or to you know run it by the new features or new products or new directions do you ever do that yeah i mean uh, yeah absolutely um and i think we'd be crazy not to Hmm. um i think um especially this year um you know i know um especially Beth actually has hopped on many, many calls with, with customers. Um, Rachel on the team too. Russell who's obviously here is, um, he's been, he's, he fronts so many of those calls. And I think, um, I think 
when when working on a new feature and a new product, often the mistake we've made in the past, and I think I see a lot of other companies making, is that you get ideas for features or you you ask customers, you listen to what customers want, and then you and then you go away and you start building it. But but and and then the next time you talk to the customer is once you've built it and once you've released it, <laughs> and then so you go from like. At least I've, this is from what I've seen. Like you get a lot of feedback early on, you go and build the thing, and then you talk to them once you've done it and once all the work's done. And I think as much as possible, trying to involve customers throughout that process, like whether it's a new feature, a new product area, or a new, um, you, you know, new, new, whatever it is, like trying to involve customers. I think overall especially when you're in you're a smaller team, a smaller company, like I think it's incredibly valuable to be because, because it, it makes the customer feel part of the growth of the company. And I think sometimes when you're a smaller business, that's one of the most valuable things you can do to, to make them feel part of the growth and evolution of your, of your business and your product. So um, for us, I think that's been incredibly valuable at times. Like when we were building out the, the live chat, features in in the product we we worked incredibly closely with with customers we had like an open kind of forum where they could drop us feedback um where you know they would raise their concerns they would tell us why they weren't using it what was frustrating them about it and and i i I think we ended up with a very loyal group of people using the the product and and building a product that was much more aligned with with uh, their needs rather than going away, building something, and then hoping that we got it right. <laughs> um, so I, I think, yeah, the more you can work with customers, involve them. Like if you've got a bigger pool of customers, then maybe creating like a group, you know, you could create like a VIP kind of group of customers that that you seek for feedback, that, you know, make them feel welcomed and, you know, give them early access to things. I think there's a lot of opportunity for SAS. SaaS businesses to to do that, um, and and I, I think both sides win. Like you as a business get so much more feedback and get customers bought into the evolution of the platform, and hopefully loyal, much more likely to grow and expand customers, and and customers get early access to features, get to geek out and see what you're building, and I I think for a lot of SaaS businesses that's a real a real opportunity actually i'm really happy you mentioned that building with the customer making them feel even more yeah. special with vip uh, because that's what i was trying to touch upon or trying to see how it is in go squared i was uh, i listened to this thing uh, a couple of weeks or maybe months ago that stuck with me it was the story of uh, david cancel from drift drift.com and, and mm-hmm. he he yeah. was saying how uh, I don't even know whether it was in Drift or in the previous company. He was saying how they, they would have a customer paying something like 20000 a month. And they would talk about new features. Or they would say, we need this. We absolutely need this. But then the customer would say that. But then he would say something like a stupid amount telling them, look, you need to pay five more dollars a month. It's just a, an internal uh, policy <laughs> or something just to see if they're actually committed. Because then that effort, that 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 sort of movement, would quote unquote validate it in the same way in, mm. in, in which you were saying, uh, you know, if you if you listen to them, go build and you you only get in touch with them, them being the customers. When it's done, there's a lot of lost value in between. So maybe mm. involving them with money is the example I've given, or the example you've given was involving them in the in the sense of actually building it with and for them, which I, I mm. think could be valuable as well if if they take a long time to get back to you like weeks or they don't get back to you at all that's a sign of val- lack of validation i should say well yeah so <laughs> it, absolutely absolutely yeah i think you know the the classic saying of you know build something people want if um if you're building it and you're struggling to get hold of people to give give you feedback during the the evolution of it then there's your answer that's a very good sign that maybe maybe this is not the thing to be working on <laughs> yeah yeah um or that maybe you've got the wrong people that you're building it for. Uh, or it's, it's definitely something you are actively learning, which is, in, which is incredibly valuable. And I, I just think the more, the more you immerse yourself in, in what, what customers are saying, doing, needing from you, the, the, 
better you can build a product and a company around them. And, um, and that's at the heart of what, what, what we're trying to do. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's certainly, you know, I, I guess we could talk all day about product, product management, product decision making, product vision. But, um, but I, I, I really think, uh, you know, you, you've got to also balance um, that customer input with, with a, a level of vision and decision making that you have as a, as a leadership team or as a founder. You know, I, I think it's an area I, I often find I, I'm trying to figure out of like, I, I, you know, I've got a vision for where I want us to take the GoSquared products and the platform and marrying that up with customer feedback and customer demand and, and marrying it up with customers who don't always necessarily know what they want until they see it or they tell you what they want, but they <laughs> maybe articulate it in a different way to how you see it. And, and marrying vision and customer feedback up is, I think, uh, an incredibly delicate and difficult thing to get right um and it's something we're always trying to iterate towards but i just think generally like you know y you can't have a vision for a, a product if you don't deeply deeply understand the people you're trying to build for and, and their their own challenges or or their own problems and what their needs are so um you know the more you immerse yourself in in what your customers want and their challenges and you know, but when when um, pre lockdown, if we can remember back that far, I, one of the hmm. things I enjoyed so much was when you would go to visit a customer in their office, and you realise that, you know, for for us, like we spend all day every day thinking about Go Squared, and <laughs> and we're thinking about every little de detail of the product. And okay, some of our customers might care about that, but when you go to visit a customer in their office, you realise that you're one of 20 tabs in their toolbar and um, you, you're in a, an office with bustling with people and someone's thinking about their weekend and where they're going to go for their <laughs> for their spa day on the on Sunday <laughs> and they've got an important meeting with a, one of their customers the next the, in the next hour and you realize how <laughs> possibly insignificant you are to a customer's life or or how or where you fit and the way you where your place is and I, I i think that's that's incredibly uh humbling and and um insightful as as someone working on a product or building a building a company to to remind yourself that you are not the world to each of your customers you are a tiny part of it and and the better you can understand that of your customers the better you can you can build to address that and to um to account for that you know, the, you realize how blindingly obvious you have to make things in your product. The re, the, you realize how little tolerance people have for the product not working as they need it to. Um, you realize how, yeah, just stupidly simple you need to make things to, to really do what people need. And, um, and, and yeah, it, it's just incredibly incredibly insightful to 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 gain that info and, and i i think pre-lockdown it was getting in the office to meet people but the second best thing is to to get on a zoom call and, and talk to people and um and and understand uh yeah what what they're up to what's going on in their day and where you fit into that and uh and everyone no, no matter actually wrote about this the other day but you know i think it's often easy to think well I'm a busy founder. I'm a busy product person. I don't have time to get on calls with customers, but you you can make time if you choose to. You can always make time. You you don't find time. You you make time make for it. the things yeah. you want to do. And uh, and I think getting on getting on a call with a customer, you know, just ask yourself when the last time you did that was, and uh, and if it was more than a week or two ago, then probably worth trying to address that and um and change that and uh, i think if you do then, then you'll be amazed at what you learn from it uh, i know i always am <laughs> that makes sense that makes sense um james really love the discussion i feel like we could talk for hours and hours so, <laughs> so i really enjoy this but at the same time it's been an hour and 10 minutes and uh 
not not to force you to do anything, but you've got a couple of questions on the Reddit AMA already. Right. Okay. Um, Amazing. <laughs> I, I'm I'm glad we touched upon these topics. And again, I feel like in every every thread that we make, we could have gone down the rabbit hole deeper. And deeper. So so I really yeah. love how this went. Uh, I think we should do it yeah. again. And um, uh, let me know just for for the people listening. Uh, besides yeah. Twitter. Where should they find you? Where can they keep up with you? And is there any stone we've left unturned? <laughs> well, for a start, thank you so much for being a fantastic host, Daniel. Um, I, I think in terms of uh, following me or whatever, like I certainly, Twitter is one of my main outlets. Um, I'm James J. Gill on Twitter. Uh, that probably shows on, on here on Twitter spaces, at least. Um, uh, obviously, Go Squared is, is the, the business, uh, gosquared.com. Uh, or you can Google it. You probably don't need to enter the web address these days. Um, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, if, if you want to hear more of my ramblings, I, I do have this <laughs> podcast called Lost and Founder, which um, which you can you can find. I tweet that out. So again, head to my Twitter. Um, I've got my own personal blog as well, James James Gill dot, uh, dot co. James Gill dot co is the blog. Um, but yeah, Go Squared is is where I, I put my heart and soul into things every day, as does the rest of the team and. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, for a lot of the people listening, um, what we're doing with Go Squared, the products, the content, the educational stuff is is up your street. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I just want to say a huge thanks to to anyone who's asked questions or listened to this, and thank you to you, Daniel, for for hosting me. It's been a true honor, and um, and yeah, I'm very grateful to have some some stage time with you. It's it's really great. Likewise, likewise from mine. I, I just want to touch upon the, the compliment you said. I was a great host. Um, mm-hmm. I was just following your advice, your your teaching from the coach. I didn't say too much. I just asked and listened <laughs> for most of this. So, see, I'm a fast learner. I just picked that. That's the trick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, James. Thanks very much for your time today. To anybody listening to this who uh, might want to have a question now or a little point, I mean, I don't know how, for how long James will be hanging on, but we've got an ongoing text AMA, so you can type in your question. That's on Reddit SAS slash R slash SAS. And uh, many more AMAs coming up through, but don't miss this one out with James because uh, I think he's got a lot of valuable stuff to share besides everything he shared today in this in this, uh, in this this spaces room. James, thank you very, very much for your time. It's 